Hello everyone, you did really well in your recent test on DNA, cell division and genetic engineering. There's just a couple of small things I'm going to pick out. I'm going to go through the answers very quickly. Um, on the first page, everybody got um, the labels right there. Um, this bit over here, one or two people find a little bit difficult. Just one little mistake. So you know that you've got a certain amount of A. So you know that the amount of A equals amount of T. So if you've got 40.6 of A, you've also got 40.6 of T. Um, so if we add those two together, A and T, that's 81.2. It's percentage, so if you take that away from 100, you get two, what's that? 18.8 so 18.8 is left over half of it is c half of it is g so half of that is 9.4 so that means we've got 9.4 percent is c 9.4 percent is g if you just want to check if you add the a to the bottom of that it should add up um, to 100 and it does okay Now, underneath it, um, name the sugar. Ribose is a type of sugar, but the name is deoxyribose. Everybody got phosphate. The bottom bit caught a few people out, and I suppose maybe in your notes it doesn't make it clear that this is the actual name, but it's the base triplet code. Um, that's what you need to put down if you're asked for that hypothesis where three basis codes for a particular amino acid, that's called the base triplet code. Uh, <clears throat> down here, you just had to use the information in the table to work out CAT, and everybody worked out these amino acids properly. And if we swapped around, we'd end up with isoleucine. The different, what would be the result? Well, you get a different protein being formed, or maybe the protein doesn't work properly because it doesn't have the right amino acids. This question caught a few people out. So... If we look at the information, um, it tells you there's four chromosomes in each cell. Cell A is from the skin, and you're asked in part A, what would happen if cell A divided by mitosis? So cell A and mitosis. So mitosis, you know that you get two daughter cells. So we're going to start off by drawing two daughter cells. Now, really there should be a nuclear membrane. The key thing is that the daughter cells are genetically identical to the parent cell, but you need to be careful about this. If you look up here, you'll see there's one black and one sort of white chromosome in the big one. So we need to draw that. So we need to draw a black. Whoops, so much for my black. Let me see. So we need to draw a black chromosome and a white chromosome and an X and a Y and we need to colour the X in. And this other cell here is exactly the same. Then you're asked <coughs> for part B, during meiosis, what would you get if cell B divides by meiosis, so cell B which looks exactly the same as cell A, what would you get? Well, meiosis means that you get four daughter cells. I'm doing it very quickly, so I'm not going to draw the nuclear membrane. Four daughter cells. Now, over here, this is a pair of homologous chromosomes. These will form another pair of homologous chromosomes. One will go to each, well, half of the daughter cells. So we need one black one, one black one, one white one, one white one, an X, and an X, and a Y, and a Y. Now, in terms of the way you could have done it, you could have swapped these around. 
those could have been swapped around or these could have been swapped around or these could be swapped and so on. There's a lot of different combinations. But the examiner was looking to make sure that you've got four daughter cells, that each cell is haploid. In other words, has half of the number of chromosomes that the parent cell, cell B, had. So we've only got two chromosomes in our daughter cells, whereas over in the parent cell we have four. So these are haploid cells. There's four of them. Two of them have the X chromosome. And the two other ones have the Y chromosome. Two have the shaded long chromosome, the black one. So put a wee star there. And two have the white one there. But there's different combinations. Now, what some people did, they obeyed all those rules, but actually they put... Um, let me see, I'm running out of a wee bit of space here. A few people drew something so they had a big black one and a big white one. You can't have those together. They will go to up to different cells. And the same with the, the X's. You can't have the two X's together or two Y's together, all right? If you're not sure, drop me a message. Question three, it says, describe three stages required to produce the plasmid. A couple of people wrote what happened after this stage, but it's basically asking for the stages leading up to here. So the plasmid, as you know, is a, is a loop of DNA that's found inside a, chromo uh, sorry, a bacterium. So it has to be removed. So remove, remove the plasmid from the bacterium. Cut out, if you've got human DNA, cut out the human insulin gene. Use the same. A lot of you were using uh, the term restriction enzymes, which is brilliant. Unfortunately, there wasn't an extra mark for that, but I, I mean, I was very impressed. And you've, you've done well to remember that, so that was excellent. Reduce the enzyme to cut open the plasmid and then finally insert the insulin gene. So these were the, the, the bullet points that they were looking for and they were looking for three points there. I mean, I think some of, some of you might have got um, a, a mark for mentioning restriction enzymes. Certainly if I'd been marking it in, in the real thing, I think it would have been worth a mark. And so you might get an, another mark um, if you were sort of short of marks there. If you didn't get the full three marks but mentioned restriction enzymes, I would be hopeful the examiner would, would actually give it to you because you've shown a lot of, of knowledge there and understanding. Now, going back to there says the plasmid containing the insulin gene is placed back into the bacterium. How is that used to produce large quantities? So large quantities of insulin in a short period of time. Well, it's the fact that the bacteria are put into fermenter and that they reproduce rapidly. And that means you've got millions of bacterial cells that can all make insulin. So the key thing is that they reproduce rapidly or they clone themselves. Now, I highlighted in that question, they produce large quantities of insulin in a short period of time because then it says state to other advantages. And a lot of you said, um, oh, that you can produce a lot of insulin or that the amount of insulin isn't limited by the number of dead animals or, 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 or comments like that. And now you should see that actually that's not another advantage. They've already told you that you can get lots of insulin very quickly. So they're looking at the other things. And that would be there's no ethical issues. So if you said, oh, you don't have to kill animals. Um, there's no ethical issues. Don't have to harm any animals. You got a mark for saying something like that. And then the other point is that there's no side effects or no allergic reactions. Now, some people said it's, it's more effective. Um, you really need, you're not going to get a mark for that. You're really going to have to say, look, there's no side effects because that was the problem with um, insulin from cows or from, from pigs. Finally, everybody got the last one, it's diabetes. But generally, really, really well done. I was very pleased with your marks there. So keep up the good work. Have a good half term. Bye.